today we're going to talk about the 6502 processor. Um, I'm not going to go into massive amount of technical detail, but I will cover a little bit. But what we're going to cover is who designed it, why it was designed, what was the market, and what was done with it. Because a lot of people may or may not know that the, the 6502 was a pivotal processor within the early micro technology arena and along with the Z80 they were the major processor that were used in a whole plethora of micro computers all throughout the 80s and even up to the early 90s so what I will do is try and cover as much information as I can without basically putting people to sleep that's the idea anyway so I apologize if I do we um so we start off with way back in the late 1970s in Mo Motorola. Motorola was a chip fabrication company um, and basically they wanted to or they did design a processor which a person called Chuck Pedal who was later linked with Commodore um, computers and MOS technology was for want of a better term, peddling his way around the USA trying to sell this processor to businesses, for applications, for industrial use. And uh, the biggest thing was that um, he couldn't find a market for it. No matter how hard he tried, even if people wanted to use it, they weren't prepared to pay the prices for it. The, the Motorola processor was $250. But it's still a big chunk of money. It's over a thousand dollars or well over, you know, or near a thousand pounds. And people can't, couldn't really afford or justify that to go into what would might even be a calculator, which is, you know, crazy when you think about it. Because at the time, calculator or the calculator wars at the time were kind of coming to a little bit of a close. You know, Texas Instruments kind of sort of that. Now, Chuck realized that if you could design a processor that um, literally was cheaper and it could be bought by anybody, it was low enough price to be bought by anybody and it could do at least what the Motorola chip could do, then he was onto a winner. I mean, it would kickstart the entire industry and he was right so he decided to literally head towards MOS technology MOS technology again we're into sort of calculator chips etc um, and they were able to produce via his design work and through his team a 6502 processor which was being sold at trade fairs for $25. $25 compared is one tenth of what Motorola were charging. Now, you got it's like buying you know a, a car for a few hundred pounds instead of thousands. You know, that that was the big impact that this chip had. Now, the 6502 for people who don't really know was used in a whole host of microcomputers including a variant of that was used in the Commodore 64 using the BBC Micro a lot of games consoles through the 90s it was basically it was prevalent throughout the microelectronics arena mainly because of its price so from that point of view Chuck gifted really gifted the um, microelectronics and computer industry a way of moving electronics and computers forward by decades you know especially in the consumer arena now the one of the ways he was able to get the costs down was to take Motorola's 70 percent failure rate on their processor 70 percent it's a huge number of failures and build on that through MOS technology and then have only a 30 percent failure rate that was a huge huge leap so 70 
percent success rate and that makes a huge impact when you're trying to sell components and processes and parts to an industry because the prices would start dropping through the floor now bringing a success rate from 30 percent to 70 percent was huge i mean it was massive but they also kind of did what Acorn did um, with their risk computer system uh, or is I mean it's not exactly risk but it was a, it's a good analogy I mean basically they were able to reduce the transistor count in the chip as well to around about 3500 which you know today 3500 is nothing you know they basically use more than that in a processor in a washing machine but you know at the time getting transistor rates around to that point also helped keep the cost down you know and um, so everything they did along the way it was again it was a commercial it was a commercial step each and every decision was made was made from a commercial standpoint whereas a lot of companies such as you know Acorn late earlier in Acorn's life made it for a technical standpoint and they didn't particularly build anything to a price point where this was kind of the other way around and the processor itself was an 8-bit processor which was kind of been expected for the day and it did very very well once the consumers got hold of it and the hobbyists got hold of it and the likes of Apple got hold of it the 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 sales of the of the actual chip went through the roof and that's what Chuck was actually aiming for and you know from that point of view even if it didn't sell in the numbers he hoped for it was a success and he did what he set out to do the 68 100 was um, a processor that really the 6502 was based on but they did a 6501 as well and the 6501 and the 6502 sold really really well and they got the attention of Motorola now the biggest problem they had was that Motorola took them to court they took umbrage with the fact that they were selling a processor at a tenth of their costs and uh, so they took them to court now when they took them to court they cited the 6501 and the 6501 processor um, was MOS technology sort of cheaper variant of the processor if you, you know if you want to compare the like for like and um, that was the one that they cited so they, were, they couldn't use that processor anymore but they left the 6502 alone so that enabled them to carry on basically producing that because they came to an open license agreement with Motorola um, by the end of the court date the this was around about sort of 76 1976 and it was also around the time when Jack Trammell um, decided that he had enough of Texas Instruments um, closing his business down with their wipe with basically wiping the floor with these calculator chips because they were supplying him but um, they were charging him a lot more than what their pro their own products were so Jack Trammell was kind of losing so he um, decided to buy a chip fabrication plant to literally to get his own back on Texas Instruments and that's when he got involved with um, Moss Technology and bought that plant and it became part of Commodore um, and then once that happened um, Commodore literally became the producer of the 6502 CPU now the, the, the thing with the 6502 that it was actually marked as, as a 6510 for the Commodore 64 so it was altered a little bit um, for their own use within the Commodore 64s which went on to be the most popular microcomputer ever produced um, anything from estimates from 17 to around about 27,000 units if you know depending on where you look and what statistics you pull out but they sold 
literally millions. And when you think that Sinclair sold five millions across its lifespan of the Spectrum computers, it was a huge difference in volume. But the um, the 6502 processor was kind of an altered pinout processor from the 6800. Now the 6800 used, I think, an internal data bus of 16 bits, where the 6502 used two 8-bit data buses or two 8-bit registers. Um, a lot of their pins were identical. There were certain pinouts where you'd have um, a pin on one of them was a waking state and the other one was a null state. Um, but there wasn't a massive amount between them. They reduced the transistor count um, on the 6501 and the 6502 round down to around about 3500. So they reduced costs. They reduced costs on everything from transistors to the, the package that the actual processor came in, which was a dual inline package, uh, 40 pins. And they did everything that they commercially could do to bring the cost down. And Motorola had to respond. They brought the cost of their CPU down to $68. And then before the before long before it was taken over by MOS Technology or before the 6502 was and MOS Technology was taken over by Commodore and Jack Trammell, they brought their price MOS Motorola brought down the price of their chips down to around six um, from $68 to about $35. So they were trying to be competitive. But the 6502 was ubiquitous. I mean, it was used everywhere. It was used in BBC Micro. It was used in Apple II computers. It was used in a lot of games consoles. It was used right up to sort of the mid-90s as well. And it was a success. Now, you kind of hope, kind of think of what would have happened if they stayed at uh, Motorola? What would have been the next step for them? Would the 6800 become or would have became this a 6502 variant? Would that would have actually happened with their pricing as well? Um, but, you know, it's one thing we'd never know. I think um, the 6502 greatly enhanced the microelectronics arena and it allowed hobbyists and it allowed technical tinkerers to get hold of a processor that they could actually work with and use. Also, I'm going to flash up the some of the machines that the 6502 actually served in. So I hope you um, enjoyed the little bit of insight into the 6502. As I said, I wasn't going to be massively technical. Um, let's just give you an overview of what the 6502 was and how it came about. I hope you enjoyed this and um, if you'd like to listen to some more then there's other videos on this channel that you can view. Um, if you would um, like to subscribe then just hit subscribe and we'll keep you up to date with anything that goes on. I hope you um, enjoy this and I will hopefully see you soon. Okay, Thanks a lot for listening and watching. Have a good evening. Bye.